Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming bright and early. It's an exciting and full day. And it is starting, I want to thank Beata, Dean Beata Schmidtman for being here this morning and um, providing us with welcoming comments. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Lucia, and uh, buenos dias, and good morning to everyone. This is an exciting day. I mean, who would have thought that we are going to be celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Iowa State University U.S. Latino Studies program here today, when Hector founded it 25 years ago, actually 25 and a half years ago, as you just told me, who knew we'd be here today in this beautiful space? Um, it was a visionary and a bold step at the time. While the humanities flourished at the university 25 years ago, there really was no coordinated effort to teach, support, and explore Latino culture. Activists and leaders at ISU and in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences recognized that this was a void that needed to be addressed. Even then, these visionaries recognized that Latinos and Latinos and their culture were destined to be a critical part of the future of the United States. Today, Hispanics and Latinos make up 18.3% of the US population, but only 5.4% of students at ISU. In the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, we're doing a little bit better. 6.8% of our majors identify as Hispanic or Latino. By the middle of the century, however, Hispanics and Latinos will comprise a quarter of the US population, and a land-grant institution like ISU needs to be a pioneer in bringing higher education to this community. And clearly, we have a long ways to go if we talk about 5.4% at the university and 6.8% in the College of Arts and Sciences. Iowa State University is actually a bit of a pioneer in introducing the US Latino Studies program, as you will surely hear later from uh, Dr. Suarez and Avalos. But in some level, that doesn't surprise me. In the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, being a pioneer is more than just an accomplishment. It's an expectation. Of course, we would have created a distinguished program to recognize the Latino community, a community whose culture has enriched lives in this country for multiple centuries and will continue to do so for multiple centuries. And in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, our departments take on the responsibility and do so proudly are providing a lot of the Iowa State curriculum in diversity and inclusion. By now, Dr. Avalos and now Dr. Suarez have elevated this program into a point of pride in the college, a truly collaborative program and source of learning, engagement, celebration, and research. Today on the program's website, you can find a podcast produced by students about individual experiences of youth struggling to find their cultural and personal identities. Students in the program lead and inspire important dialogue at the Iowa State Conference on Race and Ethnicity, I-Score, as it's known on campus, and on the national stage at NCOR. Faculty in the program have published work covering religion in US Latino literature, the civil rights of Mexican Americans, learning science and English as a second language, political activism and dance, and the experience of Latinas and Latinos immigrating to Iowa, among many other areas. Today, we're celebrating a truly essential asset to the College of Arts and Science and to the university and to the broader community here in Ames and in Iowa. The education, the experiences, and scholarly endeavors of this program embody the values of a 21st century education, introducing new perspectives, imparting diversity, and expanding the way people think. I'm proud that LAS is the home to a program that presents the past, the present, and the future through so many lenses. It's an incredible time to provide a backdrop, a voice, and an informed perspective to the nation and to the world. Thank you all for allowing me to celebrate 25 years with you. I hope you continue the conversations from today and engage in dialogue on and off campus. And please enjoy the wonderful program today and stay for the tapas. Thank you all for being here today and enjoy your program. Thank you very much. A program like this cannot exist without the enthusiastic support of the administration, so thank you. 
I will take a couple of minutes to uh, welcome a little bit more officially. So let's um, welcome to the US Latino Studies program 25 year anniversary celebration. I arrived on this campus in 2017 with the express task of revitalizing the program. What that meant exactly was not clear to me at the time. I knew, however, that the first step was to find out what was already in place on campus. Who was working on the issues, the classes involved, and what was our student body? What did our student body need? I was fortunate that Dr. Avalo, Hector Avalos, the founding director in 1994, met with me and provided distinctive background information. He shared his experiences, his observations, and continued enthusiasm for U.S. Latino studies at ISU. He has ever since been very generous with his support and presence, and I remain always grateful. In the last four years, faculty have joined the campus community, and I see some of our new faculty here, welcome, and bringing with them contagious energy and new pedagogies. Thank you, right? I feel honored to, to direct this program, built by an amazing campus with truly dedicated faculty, curious students, and a very generous staff. The task of resuscitating the program has been one of connecting people, implementing curricular innovation, and supporting novel, high-impact learning platforms. Today's symposium will present us with the many examples of why this program matters. So this is our, our flag, our banner, and if we can go to the next one. Latinos as X are the largest and fastest growing culturally diverse population in the United States and represent a dynamic and thriving American reality, or I should say, realities in the plural. Here at ISU, US Latino Studies at Iowa State is a cross-disciplinary cro coalition building program that offers well-structured and creative coursework to students interested in the arts, cultures, economies, histories, politics, religion, and the literatures of Latino X communities throughout the United States. It facilitates a study of a vast array of communities and individuals with roots in the Caribbean and Latin America and to long-established U.S. citizen communities such as Chicanos, Chicanas, Mexican-Americans, Tejanos, Californios, Cuban-Americans, Dominican-Americans, and Puerto Ricans on the island and on the mainland. Because of the complicated colonial histories, diverse ethnic, racial, and ra religious backgrounds, and cross-cultural experiences, the United States Latino AX studies embodies a very bold kind of hemispheric, hemispheric international he enterprise, right? So it's not just national, it's also international. South, North, South, Caribbean, goes beyond the boundaries that we always uh, think succinctly. My own story represents a small example of the ways Latino AX identify and come to be active members of the United States. My parents, we're born, so there's the next, the next slide. Next slide, there you go. So I, I wanted to share, I know that everybody's sharing a picture, so I thought I'd pull up a picture. That's me at three days old in Spain, so I wanted to share that. My parents were exiles from Cuba who migrated through Spain where I was born. So that's a picture in a little spot on Spain. It's my mom and my dad. Then we lived in New York City where my grandfather had been living since the 50s and finally settled in West New York, New Jersey where my childhood bedroom still awaits me and greets my child. <laughs> I've just embarrassed her. That trajectory of displacement by which cultivating home happened in a different language in multiple national spaces shapes the person I am today and, the grounds, the, and grounds the way that I teach, reach out to my students and think about concepts of belonging. The book that I co-edited with my friend, so next slide. We're gonna have to, next slide, yeah. So the book that I co-edited with my friend and colleague, Ruth Behar, The Portable Island, Cubans at Home in the World, gathered autobiographical essays of Cubans living all over the world, in Puerto Rico, in Mexico, China, Chile, and Russia, among other places. Latin Americans migrate to many countries and make their homes in many cities and towns. The tales of identity in different countries and in different languages shared by the portable island is echoed by the myriad tales of identifications that Latinos as in the United States hold dear to their hearts. Central to our memories, our travels, our displacement, and our deeply anchored home spaces is a commitment to community and family based on human connections. That, in an ideal world, inspires understanding and peace. The themes that guide today's symposium commitment, connection, 
inclusion reflect not only my own sociocultural beliefs, but a humanitarian movement that I see daily worked on college campuses, community centers, churches, and neighborhoods throughout our nation. How can we be better neighbors, live more holistic and empathic lives, and empathetic lives? What does a production of knowledge by and about Latino X uh, mean to the way that the United States imagines and shapes its future? These questions, fundamental to Latinx studies, align perfectly with Iowa State University's strategic plan. And I quote, to create, share, and apply knowledge that makes Iowa a better place, end quote. I think that sometimes diversity is read as difference in a negative way that implies division. Insistently, the US Latino Studies program cultivates, cultivates diversity as possibility of new ways of seeing and being in the world, creating and honoring different knowledge bases and imagining new models of community and collaboration. This is featured in today's program themes, commitment to engage teaching, high impact learning, community awareness, and respect for plural knowledge systems, connection to each other and to different academic units, colleges, institutions, and ways of being. Inclusion, to make sure that everyone, everyone, feels valued and supported. I would be remiss, it would be remiss of me to insist on magical thinking and active constructive focus without recognizing that today's world is especially difficult for many Latino families. As immigration status has become a theme of disgrace throughout the country, Latino studies is thus the more necessary as we imagine inclusion in a humanitarian context. Today represents a special time to acknowledge the importance of Latinx communities on our campus, in our state, and across the country. With marvelous presentations by faculty, staff, students, and guest speakers, we will have the opportunity to reflect on why Latinx programming, classes, and community engagement matter today more than ever. This symposium has been made possible, and here I wanted to say the thank yous, right? Um, this symposium has been made possible by an enormous amount of, of collaboration and funding and enthusiasm. I see my, our, our core faculty saying yes, yes, right? Um, so it's a long, long list. More than 20 units have provided funds. So units, uh, departments, programs, and we got a very, very, uh, generous uh, symposium grant from the Center for Education and Arts and Human for Excellence, the Center for Excellence in Arts and Humanity. So please make a stop and look at our list of all the fabulous donors and funders and supporters. Um, and without further ado, let's give us a very warm welcome to Dr. Hector Avalos, our founding director. Well, thank you very much for uh, having me. Uh, I don't have very many things to say. Uh, I will say that uh, the program was founded in 1994 uh, by yours truly. And it, it is not uh, the best um, representation of what what, it, what we envisioned, uh, because at, at that time what we envisioned was uh, a smaller program. <laughs> and what we envisioned was a, 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 a more, you know, a better program. So, uh, and, 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 and the thing is, uh, the problems with, with, uh, with our, our, our setup at, at, at that time were, number one, we needed more faculty. And so uh, we got people in history, we got people in uh, political science, uh, we got people in sociology, we got people in English uh, to, to help us. And so that, that is uh, the only thing I can say uh, and that's the only thing I can I can bring to this uh, uh, to to this uh, meeting. So, any any questions? Any anything else? No. All right.
Thank you. I wanted to also um, congratulate Dr. Avalos because he has been nominated and awarded an inductee of the 2019 class of the Iowa Latino Hall of Fame, Iowa Department of Human Rights. And that is a huge honor. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all.